Good morning, friends. It's Patty. It's Patty at Samuels Public Library. And I'm here with Super Bear because our theme for the day is heroes. So I have a couple of stories for you um, that I think you'll like about two very different heroes. And there are heroes all among us. And this is partially my theme is partially in honor of this is Semicon month. And because of the um, current um, COVID, we have had to be a little more careful. So we're not having our ginormous Semicon, but we are doing um, fun things. We are making masks and we have a mask competition. You can come in and get a free mask to decorate. And, um, Oh, I'll have to show you my mask uh, next time. So I did one of Woodstock from Peanuts. So you come in and you can get a couple of masks to practice and make your own mask. And uh, Super Bear is really happy to be with us and listen to the stories too. So here we go. My first story is Hero Cat by Eileen Spinelli. And I want you to know that both my stories are true. True, true, true. They are not pretend. Hero Cat. It was March, cold and slushy, time for Mother Cat to have her kittens. Seeking shelter, she dragged herself into an old garage. Hiss, snarled an old tomcat, shooing her away. Next, she tried a back alley shed. Scat, cat said two boys who were trading cards. At last, she came to a dark, abandoned building. No one was there to chase her away. Mother Cat lay down on some old rags with only her own breath for warmth. Poor Mummy Cat. Amid dusty machinery and empty cartons and rain puddling under the door, she gave birth to her precious kittens, five of them. Black and white, gray, Siamese, white paws, and smoky. Do you see them? Nursing. Mother Cat nursed and cuddled them. She purred starry lullabies and licked clean their silky fur. She's a good mama. Maybe you have a cat at home, a special pet. The days passed and Mother Cat grew hungry. She nosed her kittens into a cozy heap and left the garage to look for food. So they're all sleeping and she needed to get some food for her tummy so she could feed them well. After swallowing a few fish tails and some stale cheese, she hurried back. Along the way, she heard fire engines. She smelled smoke. And then she saw the flames coming from the dark abandoned building. <gasps> the kittens! Oh no! Plunging through the dark, thick smoke, she ran inside. She heard frightened mewing. There was black and white huddled against the wall. The kittens whimpered as Mother Cat carried her out the door.
She dropped black and white on a wet patch of grass and raced back. Hot boards scorched her paws. Smoke made her eyes burn. She found Gray and carried him to the sidewalk. Three kittens left. Into the smoke and flames again, tiny cries, Siamese, there, yes, out safe. She's rescuing her babies, isn't she? Yeah. The wind was rising, greasy windows popped. Mother Cat went back. She heard crying in the rags that had been their bed. White paws. Mother Cat lifted him with her mouth, safe at last with his brothers and sisters. Fire flared skyward. One more kitten, Smokey. Heart racing, Mother Cat returned to the building. No cry, no scent. Smokey. She can't find him. She stumbled into him, a tiny ball of fur in the corner, hardly breathing. She carried Smokey outside, dumped him with the others and collapsed, exhausted. Hours later, Mother Cat woke up in a soft blanketed box. She could smell and feel her kittens around her. She pressed her nose against each one, all together with Mother Cat once more. A photographer took a picture of them. Cute kittens, he said. Brave cat, said a fireman and firewoman. A fireman knelt by the box and patted Mother Cat on the head. More than brave, he said. This cat is a hero cat. So this is the picture of, a, of the real cat who rescued her kittens from a building in 1996. And this is the picture of them. So that shows you it's a true story and it was put in the newspaper. And when the cats recovered from their ordeal, they were adopted into loving homes. The family who adopted Hero Cat named her Scarlet. Isn't that fun? It's fun to read about true stories that have happy endings, right? So I'm going to show you our craft that you can do and um, in honor of heroes. So if you have a paper plate, you can make your own superhero mask. Yeah? So you can tie, make little holes in the side and tie, make ties. You can color with crayon or marker. And you can decide which superhero. Maybe you have a coloring book with the supers in it. And um, somebody can help you with the eyes. So I um, made Spider-Man. And I couldn't resist. I had to do Wonder Woman. So you can make your own and color and put ribbon to tie it. Yay, an easy craft for a cozy day. And so my next story is also, I told you, a true story. It's about the wonderful story of brave Bessie Coleman. So I think you will like this story. Nobody Owns the Sky by Reeve Lindbergh. And Reeve Lindbergh was happy to tell the story because her father, Charles Lindbergh, also flew planes when they were still a very new idea and was very brave. Okay.
Nobody Owns the Sky. Brave Bessie was the name people gave to the young pilot Bessie Coleman back in the 1920s. When she flew as a daredevil stunt flyer in air shows all over the United States. Born in 1892, the daughter of a Native American father and an African American mother, she grew up at a time when it was difficult for any woman to become a pilot. But for a black woman, it seemed impossible. All the same, Bessie followed her dream, and in 1921, she became the first licensed black aviator in the world. Isn't that extraordinary? Nobody owns the sky. There was a young woman who wanted to fly, but the people said, kiss that wish goodbye. The sky's too big and the sky's too high and you'll never fly, so you better not try. But this woman laughed and she just said, why? Nobody owns the sky. Up above flew the dove and the raven too, with the red birds red and the blue birds blue, and the brown hawk circling far and few, and the calling swallows that follow the dew. When the high wild geese come traveling through, with the wind on their wings flying free, flying true. She called to them all and she said, hey you, I'm coming up there too. Bessie Coleman grew up a century ago. A century is like a hundred years. In a cabin built near where the creek waters flow, she worked picking cotton as white as the snow and watch cottony clouds up above come and go. Bessie wished she could rise up and fly high and low over Texas a long time ago. Bessie's mother had not learned to read or write, but her children were raised to be eager and bright. Bessie worked hard at school and she dreamed about flight. Bessie worked and people said she was crazy. It wouldn't be right. You're a girl, not a man, and you're not even white. But she did not stop dreaming, not quite. She went off to college and wanted to stay, but it cost so much money that she couldn't pay. She moved to Chicago and worked every day at the White Sox barbershop, earning her way. White men can fly, why can't I, she would say, but the flying schools turned her away. Not right. Bessie manicured nails while the barber cut hair and she dreamed about flying, but didn't know where. Then one day someone said, fly in France. They won't care that you're black and a woman. So Bessie went there. She was young, tough and smart and she had courage to spare and she took like a hawk to the air. Isn't that wonderful? She didn't give up. Bessie came home a pilot, so happy and proud. She could ride on the wind, glide and spin in a cloud, parachute loop the loop. Bessie drew a huge crowd. When she flew over airports or fields barely plowed, her courage and daring had everyone wowed. Brave Bessie, they shouted out loud. Hooray for Bessie. On the ground, Bessie lectured to crowds, big and small. People gathered in church or inside the town hall. 
Come and fly, boys and girls, black or white, short or tall. Come and fly, everybody. Come, answer my call. The air has no barrier, boundary, or wall. The blue sky has room for us all. Other young men and women soon wanted to fly, and the people said, why don't you give it a try? The sky's still big and the sky's still high. But you're bound to get there by and by. Just remember her words till the day you die. Nobody owns the sky. So you can dream big, right? Look above, see the dove and the raven too, with the red birds red and the blue birds blue and the brown hawk circling far and few, and the call of the swallows that follow the dew, when the high wild geese come traveling through, with the wind on their wings flying free, flying true. You can call to them all, you can say, hey you, I'm coming there too. Maybe someday one of you will like to learn how to fly. Yay, nobody owns the sky. I really liked that story a lot. So, like I said, this month is Sammy Khan, which is in honor of supers and heroes. And um, we're thankful for the heroes in our town that serve and help us and um, so I hope you can come into the library and get a mask. They're free that you can decorate and we're going to have uh, awards for the most creative in your age group and original. And <clears throat> so have a wonderful rest of your day.